Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas so you can grow beyond difficult transitions and evolve from those challenging moments that may have influenced your past but will not define your future. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve as we teach you the exact skills needed to attract and keep a lasting, emotionally healthy and conscious relationship. Now, please welcome your host, certified life dating and relationship coach, trauma professional and best-selling author, Rihanna Milne. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 36th show of Lessons in Life and Love, the live radio show version, which airs every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm your host and coach, Rihanna Milne, coming to you live on BBM Global Network. You can now find the show on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, and the edited podcast is on most apps and on my website, LessonsInLifeAndLove.com. We only have three shows left. Yes, the last show will be on May 20th and we are doing some great topics for the last three shows so make sure you join us I am here coaching live for you and you know I'm on a mad mission to change the way the world loves I'll be talking to you all about how to have emotionally healthy evolved and conscious love and how to avoid toxic painful traumatic relationships which do seem too prevalent today I'm all about helping you transform your life in all areas including love into one that you're passionate about and also to attract and have that love that you deserve. Let's dive in, love angels and transformers. Our show tonight is about single and lonely. Tips for singles to find love and fight loneliness. So whether you're a woman, man, younger, older, straight, or LBGT, this information is for everyone. And if you have a personal concern, I invite you to meet with me for a life and love discovery session at my website, rihannamilne.com. Do take advantage of that during the week. Well, I'm starting out with a lesson tonight from one of my favorite books always believe in yourself and your dreams sounds like me right guys that know me (laughs) a blue mountain arts collection i used to write poetry when i was very young i used to be in the poetry club at my high school and during those years i was submitting poems to publishers and i got about 200 of them published i was writing since i've been a young girl but anyway i like this one to start this lesson it takes strength and courage and this is by bonnie st john sometimes you fight your way through battle after battle and show your strength and courage by being a warrior you wait listen to your heart find wisdom to take the right path and show your strength and courage by being patient you stand up for what you believe in say no to that which is not compatible with your values and show your strength and courage by being true to yourself you open new doors for yourself and what Even when you seem too tired to go on, you find the energy to see a new dawn, a new point of view, and create a new direction where none seems possible. You show your strength and courage by being optimistic. No matter how many times you are knocked down, you continue to rise again. Oh my God, this lady's telling my story. (laughs) For those of you that know my history and all my clients do, this poem really, really spoke to me about having the courage, the strength, listening to your heart, taking the right path, finding your wisdom, your strength and your courage, being patient. I always tell my singles, we'd rather be single than settle. Stand up for what you believe in. So many things were basis of what I teach and I coach. I really love that one. And what spoke to me too, when I work with my singles, that I know they come to me usually after a really difficult marriage or a breakup of a long-term relationship. They're emotionally frazzled. They may have been abused emotionally, psychologically, physically, financially sexually and there's so much to overcome and I just say it starts with one day at a time one step at a time learning as much as you can and that's why I put out so much material for my clients and friends that are needing help from around the globe and I'm going to tell you many of them tonight in this podcast because we only have three left and next week by the way is going to be advice for couples and then the last show is going to be positivity and life and love so three three really strong topics. So I want to make sure you get me for the last three shows on BBM. This will end season one of the show. And then I'm taking a small break, coming back with season two only on the podcast version. 
It's not like I'm going away only for a little bit of a break. And then I will be back with a podcast. And that you can always find on LessonsInLifeAndLove.com. That is a podcast website and archives. All shows are there and you can access every app that I'm on from there as well. So it's good to start at the website and then move forward from there. Today's show is being brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a free title and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna. I want to start tonight on loneliness. This is called the new epidemic. And this interpreting from an article in Psychology Today of April 2018. Yes, I keep my research materials for a long time. And this article is by Jennifer Latson. She starts by saying loneliness is a problem of epidemic proportions affecting millions from all walks of life. It's getting more and more prevalent. Society change is driving new levels of isolation and alienation by now. Most of us know that loneliness isn't a problem to be laughed off. We're in the midst of this loneliness epidemic. Loneliness poses a serious physical risk. It can be literally deadly. Insufficient social connection is a bigger risk factor than obesity and the equivalent of smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. And they say it's only getting worse. Loneliness can cause serious hurt. It actually acts on the same parts of the brain as physical pain. For the subjective feeling of loneliness, the internal experience of disconnection or rejection is at the heart of the problem. Most of us, more than ever before, are feeling its sting, whether we're younger or older, and even married or single. It hides in plain sight. It isn't typically seen as a threat, even though it takes a greater toll on our well-being. The need for intervention is considered urgent. Lonely people are more likely than the non-lonely to die from cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory illness, and gastrointestinal causes, essentially everything. Those with fewer than three people that they could confide in and count on for social support were more than twice as likely to die from heart disease than those with more confidence, twice as likely to die of all causes, even when age, income, and smoking statuses were comparable. Loneliness contributes to countless health woes. Lonely people who got sick suffered more severe symptoms than the non-lonely. Lonelier people feel worse when they're sick than do less lonely people. It's simply not about being alone. Many of us crave solitude, which feels restorative and peaceful when desired. What might qualify as pleasant for some, however, can be misery for others, or even for the same person at different times. And I think those with us who have busy careers and work with people like us psychotherapists and coaches, we are always worrying about our clients. So to have that time away is really important for us to block into our schedules, right? And I like that solitude time at the beach. That's why I live in Florida. Water is very healing to me. For some people, it's the woods and the mountains. But it's really important to connect with nature when you're feeling blue or just to escape if you're feeling overwhelmed. Loneliness is a perceptional state that depends more on the quality of a person's relationships than on their sheer number of them. People with few friends can feel fulfilled, but people with vast social networks can feel empty and often disconnected. So it's subjective. It's all about how the person feels. Feelings is really the matter. How exactly does the feeling chronic loneliness hurt us? In addition to make us more susceptible to viruses, it's also strongly correlated with cognitive decline in dementia. And that's really scary for the baby boomers. Lonely people are more than twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's than the non-lonely. And that's really quite shocking. Depression does elevate the risk for Alzheimer's slightly, but not as much as loneliness. Loneliness and depression would go hand in hand. The two states seem to feed off of each other. Lonely this is as debilitating as psychological conditions characterized by a deep sense of emptiness, worthlessness, lack of control, and personal threat. By loneliness can be an accurate predictor of depression. Depression doesn't necessarily predict loneliness, but also loneliness adds to increased stress, anxiety, and even anger. Loneliness makes us feel sad, 
but the sense of personal threat seems to be what it makes it so physically toxic. Our drive for social connectedness is so deeply wired into our brain that being rejected or socially excluded hurts like an actual wound. Feeling disconnected from the people we rely on for help and support puts us on a high alert, triggering the body's stress response. And this is why it's tied to so much illness due to the high stress. Lonely people, like most people under stress, have less quality of sleep, higher blood pressure, and increased levels of the hormones cortisol and epinephrine. These in turn contribute to inflammation, which we know causes Alzheimer's, and weakened immunity, which causes fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. Left unmet, it still has the power to kill us just by a slower, more invisible mechanism than starvation. If we feel alienated, once our fight or flight system is activated, we're more likely to fight others and to hug them. Even if you're isolated for a long period of time and you crave people, you tend to be more angry and feel more threatened and less trusting. The emerging theory of loneliness, it says it makes people more hypervigilant to the possibility that others mean to do them harm, which makes it even less likely that they'll be able to connect with people meaningfully. The negative feedback loop is what makes chronic loneliness very difficult, opposed to situational loneliness, which comes and goes in everybody's life. People have been lonely for a long time period. The fight or flight response has kicked in to overdrive, making them defensive and wary in social situations. Chronically lonely people tend to approach a social interaction with the expectation it will be unfulfilling and look for evidence that they're right. Lonely people pay more attention to negative signals from others, interpret judgmental behaviors when it's not really intended without even being aware of it. They actually sabotage their own efforts to connect with others. The social group won't help unless people can first shed the unconscious biases that keep them from establishing intimacy. Now, I interpret that as the unconscious childhood trauma wounds from your past. So this is exactly what I do with my clients. Again, coming from usually a breakup, a difficult relationship or marriage, they are feeling lonely. They're feeling shy to go back out there and meet others. And we help them get beyond that. And the fact is more Americans are living alone than ever before, making us more likely to become socially isolated, especially as we age. The number of older people without a spouse, a child in their home, or any loving relatives around them is really growing. Being married doesn't protect you from loneliness either. Now, that was kind of surprising. Out of the 43% of participants who reported chronic loneliness, more than half of them were married. Everyone, of course, is lonely at some times, especially after the loss of a loved one or move to a new area. You're starting all over, and that can be very difficult. The very elderly are higher risk for chronic loneliness because they've often lost their partners, siblings, and friends. And that demographic is growing because life expectancy is increasing. Loneliness has also skyrocketed amongst teens and young adults. Those between 16 and 24 were the most likely of all age groups to report feeling lonely. Now, that fact also surprised me, being that they're college age and have friends, but that's a big stage of transformation. So with that, I can understand, and I work with a lot of people um, going off to college, in college, coming back from college, not able to find work and feel isolated and lonely and then dejected. So that's a great time to get them into life coaching with me. Many experts blame the growing loneliness of young people on social media, too, because they argue that that hinders the development of real world social skills necessary to build close friendships. Now this has been talked about a lot, but now their studies are even showing that. Roughly 40% of Americans report regularly feeling lonely in 2010, which is a lot of people, up from 20% in the 1980s. In 2004, their survey, the average person reported only having just two good friends. The rise of digital culture is what some studies place the blame on, connecting meaningfully with others in person requires us to be ourselves, open and genuine, but only meeting people by text or Facebook, you may put a smile on that, but it still leaves people feeling empty because it lacks depth and realness. Without the demands and rewards of intimacy and empathy, we end up feeling alone even while together online. Many of people have lost their empathy skills because they're not engaging and it makes them even feel more alone. Loneliness is contagious 
contagious. It spreads in clusters throughout our social networks. They define seven types of loneliness. Not all feelings of loneliness, isolation are created equal. Different states of being or situation give rise to different kinds of loneliness. So here's seven that they name. New situations. You've moved to a new city where you don't know anyone. I remember that feeling when I moved to Florida. I only knew one young man, a good friend of my daughter's, and I happened to run into him the first night I was in town, which was really cool. But I came down here alone, and it's okay. Uh, It's a new start, but I have a lot of courage, and I see change as growth. So it didn't phase me, and I'm one to get out there and say hello to everybody. But that's very scary for many, many people. Two, it says, I'm different. (laughs) If you feel different in a way that makes you feel isolated, maybe you're a different faith from many around you, of a different culture, and that makes you want to isolate. The third one is no sweetheart, loneliness. Even if you have a lot of family and friends, you feel lonely because you don't have your intimate partner. Or you may have a partner, but you don't feel a profound connection to that person. That's what they're talking about with those that are married but feel lonely. Number four, it says no animal loneliness. Many people have a deep need to connect with animals. These relationships sustain you in a way that human relationships don't, right? They love you unconditionally. Something is really missing for you and you feel super lonely. Perhaps a dog or a cat or another companion animal is good for you to consider at this time. No time for you, loneliness. This one, number five, sometimes you're surrounded by people who seem friendly enough, but they don't want to make the jump from being friendly to really being good friends they don't give you the time maybe they just keep saying they're too busy with their own lives or they have a lot of friends already number six casual friends loneliness sometimes you get into a situation where you begin to doubt that your friendships have death you're friends with people but don't quite trust them or think that they see the real you an important element of friendship is the ability to confide and trust and be that authentic person that you are so if that's missing you can feel lonely even if you have fun together and Number seven is quiet presence loneliness. You may have an active social network at work or have plenty of friends and family, but you miss having someone to hang out with at home, whether it's a roommate, a family member, or a partner. You wish for someone's presence nearby to make you feel less alone, right? Some tips to overcome loneliness that I want to get into. I love the first one. It's there, do talk to strangers. And I'm saying constantly, say hello to people. You never know who you're going to meet. I've met wonderful people this way. Take the plunge and converse with someone besides you on the bus or in the line at the store just chatting makes us feel happier and healthier we can feel much better after just 30 seconds of talking to someone in person research shows whereas we don't get that benefit from online interaction say hello when you're out there Give it seven minutes. The seven minute rule says it takes that long to know if a conversation is going to be interesting. But it's when we stumble or hesitate or have those lulls that reveal ourselves most to each other after those seven minutes. Next one is schedule FaceTime. Face-to-face contact with friends and family gives us that virtual communication if you use FaceTime or Skype. It does help with connection. It also boosts the endorphins, the brain chemicals that ease pain and enhance well-being. So, of course, in-person interaction improves your physical health, and it's the best suggestion. But second would be FaceTime if you can't get real-time. Anything by video where you're seeing each other and seeing your real expressions and connecting with your your eyes is a good thing to do. I use Facebook wisely, social media isn't really alienating, but it can be. If you're just using it to show pictures of yourself smiling on vacation, you're not going to connect authentically. Create smaller social groups, such as an online book club, or just a smaller group where you can really get to know the people in it. Be a good neighbor. There's something called the village movement with new communities going up that are really encouraging people from their community to be a part. Everyone has a job. It could be a big farm in the center where people grow different crops or have a responsibility to the community. Getting to know your neighbors more yields benefits. Higher neighborhood social cohesion lowers your risk for a heart attack. So invite your neighbors over, get to know them. You'll be happier and healthier for it. I know in my community,
community. I started the underground, my younger ladies society. Basically, I'm in a 55 and over community. So I'm one of the younger versions here. So me and another younger woman said, let's get the ladies together. And I said, why don't we have parties inside of each other's homes instead of at the clubhouse? Then we get to know each other by seeing each other's art and our decorating and see each other's houses. It'll give us decorating ideas. And that worked out great. It's really cool. It's a great way to get to know each other. Look forward to seeing each other month to month. Yeah, we're kind of like the rebels because we're not meeting at the clubhouse. (laughs) It's the underground secret society, kind of like the Dead Poet Society. I love that movie. Okay, throw a dinner party. Eating together is a form of social clue. Sharing food is a way to resolve conflicts and create a group identity. Get creative. People that are involved with creative arts and do something together, whether it's a craft night or being part of a chorus or a dance group. A lot of people can't find always the spoken words to express their feelings, but through art or dance, they feel connected with people. Uh, Talking about their feelings makes everybody feel less lonely. So whether it's to a friend, therapist, or a coach, we all benefit from talking about our feelings of isolation. That's really, really important. I see such amazing transformations with my clients that came to me anxious and depressed and isolating and afraid to get out there to be so engaging and finding amazing love. I just love the transformation. Let me put in a little plug here that I meet with people throughout the week up to one hour for a life and love transformation discovery session. And we analyze where you're stuck and where you're upset or depressed or feeling lonely and what's holding you back or sabotaging you in life or love, it's only $47. And you know my fees are 500 to 1,000 an hour. You can meet with me, it's a one-time offer, it's an introductory offer just to get to know me face-to-face. I dig really deep, you're gonna learn a ton of information. And to get that, all you have to do is go to my pop-up form on my website, which is rihannamilne.com. Really easy to find. And also while you're on there, you get free book chapter downloads so just scroll down the page my two five star rated books live and love beyond your dreams and love beyond your dreams break free of toxic relationships to have the love you deserve and live beyond your dreams from fear and doubt to personal power purpose and success and these are the cornerstone books of my coaching practice and they were sold also in Barnes and Noble bookstores in the U.S. You can get them online in many places, Amazon and BN.com, of course, as well. So make sure you get the free chapter downloads for that. And every day you can get inspired on Alexa, Alexa Daily Lessons in Life and Love. If you're on my Facebook page, which is Coach Rihanna Milne, uh, the Alexas are often posted there or on my Twitter, which is Rihanna Milne. Every day I give a two minute lesson. I know it's a lot of work. I'm trying to give a lot of free content away for my fans and my clients that I treasure, always keeping them educated. And that's what makes you strong. Knowledge is definitely power. Do reach out to touch someone, get some help, get out there and meet some people through meetup.com. That's a good place if you're new in town. When you are connecting with people, the clues in your brain releases oxytocin, which helps strengthen social bonds and increases the pleasure center of the brain. Feeling disconnected from people we rely on puts us at high alert and that triggers the body stress response. Getting in touch with people, even a meetup group. Remember other people are there because they're looking to meet people. Be friendly. Be the one to start out. I know when I'm meeting someone new, I will always make the first move. I will say, hey, it seems like we have a lot in common. Would you like to exchange phone numbers? I'll call you sometime. And I'm always the first to call. But I don't get insulted. I figure people are shy and I'm not shy. So I will call people and say, you want to get together? You want to go to this event or the craft show or the car show? I was at Kentucky Derby on Saturday. That was amazing. So I'm always up for doing really cool activities. And I will call my friends to see if they want to do that. What's missing for lonely people after all is not just social contact, but meaningful contact. The bonds that come from being your authentic self with another person. They still say the best way to foster meaningful engagement is through the creative arts. 
for whatever it takes, there's many ways to just get out there. But my common one is just say hello. Ask if you want to get together. A lot of people would want to do that. I hope that's helpful in bringing you some insight into that topic. Now I want to move on because this is a lot of good information. This next part is tips for singles. And this is from the book, Still Single, You Don't Have to Be by Casey Maxwell Claire. This is one of my much older books dating back to 2002. All of my books I use for my research, for my books, for my courses. I go back and I study and bring out to my clients, my groups. I put into my webinars and my seminars. And again, to get this type of information for free, just hang on and go to Coach Rihanna Milne on my Facebook page. That is the Facebook fan page where I post everything and just scroll down to all the many interviews I do, the information that I'm sharing. I do podcasts. I do a ton of relationship summits, parenting summits. I was just on an addiction summit because I am an addiction specialist as well. There's all kinds of information that I try to share with everyone globally. And if you want and are ready for that personal transformation, that's where you reach out to me at rihannamilne.com. Okay, so there's six different ways that people will consider you unavailable or you are sabotaging yourself totally in love. And it's super important that you identify the behaviors and the beliefs that could be keeping you single and unavailable. And there's quite a few of them. But I am getting word from Abraham. We need to go to a break. Give it one minute. Get a piece of paper and pencil. Come on back because we will be back with all this great juicy information for singles. And you are listening to the BBM Global Network. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a free title and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and get started. Why Audible? Well, Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. To download your free audiobook today, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and enjoy your free audiobook. Okay, we're back. You're listening to Lessons in Life and Love with your global life and love coach, Rihanna Milne. We've got a lot to cover. So if you miss it, just keep replaying the podcast when it comes out on Friday to get this list. But I want, as I go through these lists, to see which ones might apply to you. It's really important that you are available for love, not only physically, but emotionally. I'm going to go down this list and you mark anything that you feel makes you not available or the person you're dating not available. First and worst is someone who's married. I'm just going to keep going down the list. I'm not going to elaborate much so I can cover more material. Or he's the only one who's shown an interest in you in a long time. And I'm sorry, I'm going to speak from a woman's point of view instead of flip-flopping man to woman, okay, just for ease. He's the only one I've been interested in for a long time. I know he's not right, but it's better than nothing. Again, mark down if any of this applies to your feelings. Until I meet someone, I'll date him. No one would love me if they really knew the me full time. I like having time to myself. I isolate. If it weren't for his kids, finances, spouse, or health, we'd be together. Some kind of excuse. All the good ones are taken. Wow, how common have we heard that one? It's the most passionate and exciting relationship I've ever had. But let's face it, everything else is wrong. We can tell each other things that we can't tell anyone else. Okay, so wiser secrets. <laughs> Second category, someone who tells you that they're unavailable. If they do, believe them, and you're not going to talk them into being available. Here's some under this category. I don't feel deserving of someone who's available. That's why I date him. I love a challenge. I don't value people or things that come too easily. I need to win the approval of an unavailable person. My needs come second to the people in my life. The idea of getting what I want scares me, so I'll just just date him. I believe if I'm good enough, nice enough, or sexy enough, I can change someone's mind eventually and they'll want to be totally with me. Again, if they say they're unavailable, believe them. Third category, you're the one who claims the unavailability. 
statements are, I need to be loved more than I love back. I always give a disclaimer at the beginning of a relationship and still I end up misunderstood. I always think there's someone better out there for me. I feel superior to the people I'm involved with. I've never been in a committed relationship. So those are some of the warnings of the unavailable. Next category, alcoholics, workaholics, and any holics. <laughs> Statements under here are people are dependent on me and I like it that way. I believe I don't deserve a whole wonderful person. I believe that his illness is somehow my responsibility. If the other person were fixed, they wouldn't want me. So I'll go with someone who needs help. His weakness gives me the power that I feel I need in a relationship. I can use guilt to get my way in the relationship. One or both of my parents had a problem with alcohol or drugs or other addiction, so I'm familiar with the territory. And we all know that goes back to childhood trauma. Your unconscious is attracted to what it knows. So you will put up with that more so if your mom and dad tended to have that problem. Okay, next one. They want to change you. Comments under here is he begins sentences with, you'd be great if, or you need to just change these couple of things. Uh, Second, he corrects me a lot. No matter what I've done, it could have been better. He wants to change something that attracted him to me in the first place, like the way you dress or the way you wear your hair. I feel inappropriately dependent on his approval and guidance. I may be repeating past relationships I've had in which I only feel loved if I'm controlled. I feel like I'm being treated like a project that can only improve with his help. Now, of course, any of these statements from the very beginning, if you're feeling any of these or some of these are applying to you, you definitely need to be with me in coaching. We take away all these fears. We totally make your unconscious consciously aware so you are not going after anyone who's unavailable and you are making yourself available for the love that you desire and not sabotaging it by some of these things that are listed here. The next one is you're a changer. And this is what's listed under here. I can see potential in a person only if he changes something. I really believe I can change the things that I don't like. I grew up feeling if I couldn't please my parents. You can see how many statements here go back to childhood trauma, right? If someone actually changes for me, I move on to the other areas that need work or I move on to someone new. I need to be in charge of the relationship and I'm not willing to change. Next category. They can't get over a past love. He told me that he's still in love with an ex. I just don't want to listen. It's been over for more than a year and he's still grieving. There are still tons of pictures and personal items around from the past relationship in the common home area. He involves me in his grieving. He's let me know directly or indirectly that he would leave me if the ex were available. He still wants to be close friends with the ex and feels as if he's still involved and that's okay. I'll tell you right now, guys, it's not. If you move forward and have a new relationship, you have to have that partner first. It's different if you share children. Of course, you're going to be socially polite to the other parent at all the family functions that you need to go to for the benefit of your kids. But speaking to an ex on a daily, weekly basis is not good for your new relationship. Your new relationship will not work with that. He has left my side to come to the aid of an ex. He chooses to continue to share property or something else that necessitates contact. He's so bitter about the ex that it interferes with my relationship with him. These are all really toxic scenarios that is going to kill a new relationship. Next category, you're not over a past love. I still hope for reconciliation. The person I'm seeing is just a substitute until maybe I get the other one back. I imagine my ex during sex. That's a real bad one. I stay in contact with his family or friends. I conjure up excuses for contact with my ex. I've forgotten the bad times and romanticized the good ones. I've idealized my ex-partner. I want him to know that I'm doing well. I want him to see me looking good and will go out of my way to run into him to make that happen. I'm so obsessed with hating him that I'm not available to anyone new. Again, all these scenarios really do require good, intensive life and love coaching. Life coaching to build your self-esteem and sense of worth and getting the unconscious into conscious awareness so you stop sabotaging yourself. Next category is they're dishonest. I know he tells lies to others, but not to me. I know he lies, but I don't want to rock the boat. He'll change when he sees how much I love him. 
I know that I can change him. I don't want to live the truth either, but this way it's not my fault. I get to play the victim, which I secretly enjoy. I want to believe the lies. I need the fantasy world. You can see how psychologically damaging these are, right? Okay, the last one is you're the dishonest one. I don't tell the lie myself, but I don't correct it. Another, that's called lying by omission. It's not my fault my partner lies. I don't want my life to change. I want to believe the lie. I get to blame someone else for living in a fantasy world. I lie to myself and I feel more comfortable with someone who lies. These statements can reveal beliefs that may be supporting your single and unavailable status. If only unconsciously, you might think I'm looking, I'm out there dating, but any of these unconsciously that are triggering you can keep you from really finding amazing love. One might be, for example, I can see the potential in a person only if he changes something. You've got to do what we do call capping. Capping is correcting the negative thought. So try writing or saying in your head a sentence that you'd like to believe instead, like, I'll make an effort to accept this person for exactly who he is, not what I want him to be. Or if you pick something like, no matter what I've done, it could have been done better, Treat yourself better like a good friend and correct it and say, I appreciate my efforts or nobody's perfect, not him, not me, not anyone. And I tried my best. Recognizing your ability to change a pattern is a great place to start. We can change the patterns, but it takes a long time. We are retraining the unconscious. You see, when I work with my coaching clients, it's a very intensive program. Their workbook's 150 pages for my diamond program and 90 for my platinum program program. We dive very, very deep into the unconscious and correct the patterns that have been with you for years. Let's go into some relationship areas to avoid. It's not that everybody out there is something to run away from. It's just by learning about the ones to avoid that we make ourselves available for a relationship with the ones that we want to date, right? So you have to know what is emotionally healthy, evolved, and conscious, and who is more toxic and someone that that you do not want to get involved with. My clients have all the ammo they need to know on date one or two if they keep moving forward with someone. And if not, they tell the person very kindly and with love that they just don't think they're a good match and they move forward. Those who have had the courage to look at their lives, this is what my clients start out with. The ones who are done keeping secrets, the ones who want to be available and feeling great about themselves before they go out and date, or feel better about themselves even if they're in a relationship. This is what we want them to be aware of because we don't want anyone wasting time on people who aren't offering or just simply who your match is, right? Dating is a process, a learning process for all of us. The goal here is to enter into the best and the most loving, lasting relationship you could possibly have. I just heard from one of my prior clients, Shay, that she is in a one-year relationship since she graduated. She found someone wonderful. I'm so happy for her. And she said, I don't know if I'll meet anyone. I said, you will. You have to be patient and definitely not settle. And thinking of another person that just wrote me, she goes, you told me not to settle and you were right. I kept dating. And I kept my confidence high and knowing that my loved one was out there. I had faith that God was presenting my soulmate, which is what I tell my clients and that they're out there. But you just need to line up what you want. Right. You have to identify what is wrong as well and make sure that after date one or two that you just don't keep dating those people. Here they are. Someone who rushes into love. That's a big red flag. He declares his love immediately. He wants to see you every day right from the start. There's talk of marriage is mentioned on the first few dates. He doesn't want to slow down the pace. He tries to get intimate with you right away, groping you, feeling you up on the first date. And it's like, what a turn off. And that's someone has no respect for who you are or respect for the process. Second category, you're the one who's rushing. You believe in love at first sight. I feel like I'm running out of time to fall in love. That's a real big one for people who are in the baby boomer category. I'm constantly waiting for love to happen for me, so I'm going for this. I feel capable of falling for almost anyone who shows an interest in me. I need to know where a relationship is going right away. 
Next category, someone just out of a relationship. Normally, they're not ready to get real involved with someone. So here's some categories. I'm helping him to recover from his breakup. No, you don't want to be the Band-Aid, trust me. Second, he's not completely out of the relationship. It's over, but he still lives with an ex because of the kids or for some other reason. That means he's not available. My clients never date anyone separated um, have to be definitely divorced and available, emotionally and physically available. And he doesn't want to be alone, so we're just hanging out until the divorce is done. Eh, don't want to do that one. <laughs> okay, next category. You're the one just out of a relationship, and you just don't want to be alone. I'm afraid to feel the pain of my breakup. I've always been in a relationship, so I want one now. I feel safe in a relationship and don't want to be alone. I tend to take on the new person's agenda and start sacrificing myself and my schedule for the new partner. These are something to watch out for yourself. Next one, you don't share fundamental beliefs. Categories under this, I'm attracted to opposites. Many times the thing that attracted me in the beginning ends up being the cause of conflict. I'm hoping he'll change his mind about a big issue. He's hoping I'll change my mind about a big issue. I love the challenge. My friendships tend to be difficult as well. Again, all red flags. Next category, major differences in age, intelligence, or status. I constantly date younger or older people. I'm always the one with the money, the power, the bigger job. I'm in control. I'm never in control. Most of my friends are significantly younger or older than me. I have a lot to teach them or to learn from. Next category, someone who is too jealous or into cheap drama. He doesn't trust people. He anticipates the worst in people. He has a history of cheating partners. He claims it's his concern for you that makes him jealous. That's one I've heard a lot. He needs to know where you are all the time. He discourages you or forbids you from an activity. He wants you to change friends or your job. And one that's not listed here, he tries to keep you from your friends or your family or may sabotage you at work or in a social group that's important to you to try and isolate you. That's what a lot of the jealous do. If you are the jealous one, some of these things might be happening. I don't trust people easily. I'm insecure about my looks. Previous partners have lied or cheated on me. I create drama to keep the attention on me. I never relax. I want to control his environment. I hate myself for being jealous. You're recognizing the jealous, but you seem not to be able to control his jealousy, anger, control. Those are real solid signs of past childhood trauma, guys. So if you are struggling with that, definitely reach out to me for that introductory offer. It's only $47. That's just like a booking fee for the assessments. That also guarantees you're going to show up. So it's just a small nominal fee, but it's a one hour of solid information and help to take you back to your past to see why you're sabotaging or not available in your relationships. That's at RihannaMillen.com, so take advantage of that. More categories. Someone who crosses your sexual boundaries. He makes me feel shame about the relationship. I'm not comfortable talking about our relationship. I lie about us. If I don't participate with him, he would leave me. I have low self-esteem. I don't feel safe. I'm not comfortable with my participation sexually in what he wants me to do. I felt emotionally blackmailed at times or manipulated. Next one, someone too cheap or miserly. He doesn't trust people. He makes me feel cheap. He makes me feel petty. I'm embarrassed by his miserly behavior. He's stingy with kindness. He doesn't trust most people and he's rude. He makes me feel indebted to him. He's jealous of others' successes and can't sincerely congratulate others. If you're the miser, I'm afraid there's not enough for me. I've heard that say, there's not enough for me to go around, right? I don't trust people. I don't feel kindness easily. I keep track of all I do for others. I'm jealous of other people's successes. I don't feel safe. The last category, someone too negative or depressed. I spend all my time calming down or cheering up this person. I can make it better. It reminds me of my childhood. Now, there's a direct statement taking you back to the unconscious normal of what you went through as a child, right? If it reminds you of your childhood, your psyche is attached and attracted to that. 
And that's dangerous. That's why you must date with conscious awareness. This is what I teach. I secretly think he's right, but I don't want to be the bad guy. He fights my battles for me. And the last is, it's my fault. Now, again, I'm trying to give you tips to find emotionally healthy love. So if you're doing any of this or the partner you're with is doing any of this, or you keep finding yourself in relationships where these dynamics keep happening, this is a clear sign you have not dealt with your past childhood or love trauma. It really shows signs of how relationships in your life are or have been. Take a look at the people and the situations you're bringing into your life. And before adding someone new who fits that category, make sure you take enough time to get healing by a life and love coach. Make a list of the pros and cons. Does it add up to or subtract from your life as you wish it to be? What would it take for this to be a great relationship? If you don't know or can't articulate it, you probably can't have it because again, you're not aware of how to have the skills for a good emotionally healthy and conscious love. This was not taught to us in schools. What I created is purposely information that has not been taught in any schools, not even my triple masters of psychology. It all comes from deep research from over 300 books, over two and a half years of work in life coaching, in relationship coaching, in trauma work to help my clients overcome what they have overcome. We all begin with what do you want? What happened in your past? Let's fix that. Where do you want to go in your future? Let's create that life. What's missing? What goals do you need to set to create the life that you really love? And then we move on into the love skills that you need. Only by letting go of the bad partners or situations or even good ones that aren't working out, you just feel it's not the relationship that you want. You're just hanging in there so you're not loving only, then you can make room for great. You've got to get rid of what's not working to have what's fabulous for yourself. Okay, let's go into the next category. I've got probably one more that I can cover because time always goes fast when I find some juicy stuff, right? So we've identified several behaviors that can keep your soulmate from finding you. How many apply to you? You can't fix it if you don't know that it's broken. The goal here is to make you more aware of how some of your beliefs might be helping you keep you single and unavailable. If you're a rescuer in any way, it has a direct effect on your availability to a love relationship. Once you become aware of the consequences of your choices, you can start making better ones. You have obstacles like, I've never been in a committed relationship. I'm waiting to lose weight before I'm ready. I'll pursue a relationship as soon as I get a degree or buy a house or move. It's difficult for me to live in the now. I don't deserve happiness. Nothing comes easy. I'm repeating a childhood dynamic. Next, your mate has obstacles. I'm ready, but they have a goal to accomplish first. I've been in a similar relationship before. My happiness is dependent on another's goals and time frame, so I have to wait. I'm waiting for a married person to leave his marriage. Children from a previous marriage are an issue. The rescuer. I could do better than the mate I'm with. My mate depends on me quite a lot. I spend a lot of time and energy helping others with their problems. Often I'm the only one who sees the worthiness in a person. I rarely spend time alone. A lot of people feel obligated to me. The rescued. They crave approval. I'm in a temporary relationship until the right person comes along. No one would like me if they really knew me. I'm insecure. I'm ready to believe the worst about myself. I would love for someone to take care of me. I believe someone else should take care of me. Then there's a phantom lover syndrome. This is, we don't spend quality time or holidays together. My significant other lives far away. My significant other is married or involved with someone else. Our relationship is a secret. I can't refer to this person as my boyfriend or girlfriend. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells when we're together. I don't ask for anything because I don't expect anything. I really don't feel known or appreciated. Dating people you don't like. I'd rather date someone I'm not crazy about than be alone. I believe maybe I'll learn to like them. I don't believe I can do better. I don't know anyone else. I'll just date them until someone better comes along. I also have friends I don't really like. I don't believe I deserve better. Dating someone inferior makes me feel better about my life, and there's no chance of being hurt. Too attracted to physical appearances. This is a big one. I think someone better might come along if I wait. I'm very picky about others' flaws. I don't have many repeat dates. I feel a sense of emptiness. I have a lot of material things. I'm insecure around attractive people. 
I want people to envy me. Now, there is more to cover, (laughs) but we got the two-minute signal, guys. Oh, my God, already. The show has flown. There are many, many reasons why singles unconsciously sabotage themselves in love, and they can't figure out what it is. That's my job. I put these puzzle pieces together for you. So please don't be shy and reach out for that introductory offer. It's only $47. It's a $500 value on my website rihannamilne.com for a life and love transformation session also on there you can take the free love tests and do the book chapter downloads also download my free new app at bit.ly rihanna milne app all these will be in the show notes if in case you can't write it down you're listening in the car just go to lessons in life and love.com and all these free resources will be available for you uh, well let me go to the last lesson let me get this in this is from the same book always believe in yourself and your dreams take a chance now and then if we don't ever take chances we won't reach the rainbows if we don't ever search we'll never be able to find if we don't attempt to get over our doubts and fears we'll never discover how wonderful it is to live with them. If we don't go beyond difficulty, we won't grow any stronger. If we don't keep our dreams alive, we won't have any dreams anymore. But if we can take a chance now and then, seek and search, discover and dream, grow and go throughout each day with the knowledge that we can only take as much as we can give and that we can only get as much out of life as we allow ourselves to live it, then we can truly be happy. We can realize a dream or two along the way and we can make a habit of reaching out for rainbows and coloring our lives with wonderful days and that's by cullen mccarthy okay love angels and transformers that's all we have time for today thank you for tuning in next week we're going to cover advice for couples should i stay or should i go five love languages and more couples coaching so i appreciate you sharing the love and helping me change the way the world loves please take a moment to give me a five-star rating and comment on what you liked about the show and share the show with your friends remember to reach out during the week at rihannamillen.com for that 47 dollars first time offer life and love discovery session remember to join me next monday at 6 p.m Eastern Time on BoldBraveMedia.com. And as always, I am here to help you have the life you desire and the love that you deserve. Have a blessed and fabulous week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Your personal journey of life and love transformation has only just begun. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. And if you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a life and love transformation discovery session with Rihanna, a $500 value. Just contact Rihanna with your questions and to tell her your story at RihannaMilne.com. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.